Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to unbox today the Zombie Side Green Horde expansion. This is for the uh, Zombie Side Black Plague version of the game. And I just this just came in from Kickstarter the other day, and I thought I'd go ahead and and share with you what's inside in case you have thought about getting this for yourself or just kind of curious about that game in general. I don't know anything about it other than this was supposed to be uh, like the Undead Orcs version of it. Uh, so I'm pretty excited because the game itself I enjoy, so this will be a nice addition. Uh, so great cover art as usual, so I hope everyone can see that okay. I put the tripod up a little bit higher that way as I open things up, hopefully you can see everything. On the back here, it's a pretty big box. But on the back then it's got your standard pictures of the some of the tiles the different items that come with this. I saw some guys at the local shop, they were playing this because I realized, uh, you know, they had a catapult. Uh, so this, this I'm already seeing people playing this, so I'm anxious to get my copy out. This comes with a lot of stuff, though. I honestly truly don't remember much about the campaign. I was wondering, you know, like, I didn't see any extras, and I, I guess it didn't have extras, or it did. I don't remember now. But what comes in this box is quite a bit. It has a total of 72 miniatures. There are 6 new survivors, 35 orc walkers, 14 orc fatties, 14 orc runners, 1 orc abomination, 1 orc necromancer, 1 trebuchet, then there's 9 double sided game tiles, 6 survivor dashboards and ID cards, um, 6, six survivor colored bases, 6 dice, 48 trackers, 100. 33 mini cards, which then are uh, break down to 79 equipment cards, 54 zombie cards, and 68 tokens. That sounds like an entire game. Now, I just by looking at this, I, I know I said expansion, but it almost looks like there's enough here you could just play this as this. I don't know if this can be played separately. I'm looking here, it just says Green Horde is a cooperative game for up to one to six players. I don't see anything that says you have to have the base game because that sounds like about everything you need. Your players, the mission, but we'll see. We'll, let's see what comes in it. Because like the rules and whatnot, those are online. At least I think the rules are online. Cool Mini or Not usually publishes the rules, so if this didn't have the rule book, you could probably still find what you need to play. Whoops. See, like I set that up so I wouldn't bump it. I still bump it. All right, so here comes the shrink wrap. Let me just toss that off to the side. All right, so there's there's the box in all its glory. So we'll lift this cover here, and then when we look at the miniatures, we'll actually just set reset the camera and get in real close. So this right here, right away, well, there's rules and quests. So I think we'll be okay if you had this by yourself. Let me let me just look here. Sometimes it'll say standalone game. That's what I was looking for, something that said standalone game. So maybe somebody who knows better than me. Uh, it talks about the Zombicide game range. So it mentions Zombicide Black Plague is another core box. Black Plague and Green Horde are set in the same universe and they're fully compatible so I'm guessing this is its own separate game that's that's very cool um, so I'm guessing you do not need yep okay that's cool. I didn't know well there you go so if you're curious wanted to hop into the Zombicide world this is the latest game so this would be a great place to start now the rule book looks really good uh, let's see, we could probably zoom in just a little bit. Well, can you see it better? Maybe I'll see it better. Obviously, it's not zoomed in, so you can read all the text. I, uh, the camera's still out a little bit. But this is like the nice magazine, kind of glossy, full color. Just to kind of give you an idea. They got the artwork scattered throughout. I've always been a big fan of their artwork. I think they do great, great art. And again, examples of play. Okay, again, just reading upside down, 
can't really see everything. So this has some line of sight, this has some movement rules. Reading an equipment card. Mm -mm -mm. Is that two pages stuck? Yep, got two pages stuck together here. Again, more equipment card information. Noise. Uh, this says experience, danger level, and skills, because that's one thing as you level up, the game gets progressively tougher. So the game the game gets stronger as you get stronger. You know, which I know some some people I've talked to and played with, they don't like that aspect of the game. They they want to feel like you're more powerful, but the game already has some tough creatures in it. So in order for you to meet those challenges, you have to grow. And it's not so much that the creatures get tougher, but sometimes it's more creatures that show up or some of the tougher ones. Uh, so growth, you, you know, is still good. You still want to level up and you will feel more powerful as you play. It's just that in order to, you know, meet the challenge of tougher adventurers, the game will also get tougher. Uh, zombie burrs. Zomberberg. I was trying to read it upside down. Zombicide, friends and foes. All orc zombie cards in Zombicide Green Horde feature the Horde symbol, except for extra activations and enter the Horde cards. I guess there's some more expansions. More Zombicide. So there's probably a lot more product that came out with the Green Horde that I don't have. Uh, this, this game has blown up quite a bit. So an experience tracker. I'm, they do, I have to admit, cool meaning or not, they've always done a very good job really laying out the rules. Uh, even when we got Massive Darkness, we thought that was a little intimidating. It had quite a bit of rules to it. But that's good because I don't think we've had to go to the internet to answer any questions about Massive Darkness. And I don't really remembering having to do too much research on the first Zombicide. So I think if you read through this, I think you'll do just fine as far as learning the game and playing it. I'm sure there's always questions that come up that aren't covered. And, uh, you know, hitting the internet to research is good. But in general, I think that the rule books pretty much cover everything you need to really get going. And again, just targeting priority. Yeah, I haven't played a game in a while, so this was nice to get. And then reading through it just kind of reminds me of of uh, some of the different things. Hero boxes, yeah, there's just so much you can get. And between the modern day Zombicide and Black Plague, I just prefer Black Plague because I kind of like the, the Dungeons and Dragons feel to it. I like the adventuring. Looks like we get into the mission, so here's a quest. I didn't count to see how many missions we have here, but the missions always lay out pretty well. Tells you what you need, shows you the map tiles that you'll be using, how they're laid out. This one here's got six, six tiles, six tiles. Most of these are six tiles. Trebuchet. I'm very curious to see how the trebuchet will work into gameplay. Uh, again, that's six tiles. Looks like six tiles is the norm. Four, as I say that. Four, there's another six tiles. Actually, this has quite a few scenarios with it. Then this goes to quest 10. So these 10 quests, there's number six, six tiles again, but quest number 10, six tiles again. Then you get back into like your appendices and, and indexes. Here's your skill lists or skill explanations of things because on the cards there's a lot of key words on cards that you probably will be referencing the book for, but at least they're kind of all in the back, gathered up. Nice. I mean, overall, this is a good rule book. Sequence of play on the back. Then again, the targeting priority. Just in case you're not familiar, the targeting priority, it just kind of helps decide which, I guess in this case, orcs you get to shoot first. Because uh, sometimes, you know, you'll have a mixture of, of target types in a square and you have to take out certain ones first before you can target others. And that's fine. And the chart there just to remind you. And this is fun. Now, I've somewhere, is this a sticker? Just something I printed out. Almost felt like a sticker. Oh, because it is a sticker. Um, someone pointed out, and I didn't realize this before, but in, I think, the first Zombicide game, the box 
actually if you fold it a certain way oh wait no never mind it says here these new zombicide figures have broken formation and are fighting in different positions apply the sticker to the side of the box to help find their correct resting place oh so I guess they set up the figures and then changed it for final and they couldn't update the picture on the inside of the figure box so I get to place the sticker so we'll look at that but one of these games I thought this was instructions on how to fold up the box but one of the games the box you can actually fold it and then it I can't remember now I got thrown off by the fact that that wasn't what I thought it was I can't even explain to you what I thought I thought I thunk so never mind but here's the figure box I'm gonna open this up but when we go to look at all the individual figures we'll we'll zoom in I'm gonna open this from here yeah it's like the pizza box pizza box of miniature goodness again we'll we'll zoom in but I'm just pulling this out right now so here's some of the new character cards here's your character trays here are probably like all the equipment cards oh which is a huge stack and then you have the bases you got your dice color trackers and the trebuchet oh boy that's a hefty one too we'll definitely come and, and let you all take a look at that we'll reposition so that's very very cool alright so that's what we'll do I'm going to uh, reposition the camera and then we'll take a look at the contents close up alright so I have kind of pulled the components out and I'll show them up under the camera what I want to show you though real quick I thought this was neat inside the box I like how they've put this here there's these two plastic pieces and a little plastic piece here in the corner that holds all of the the cardboard so I thought that was just an interesting nice way usually they have a cardboard but these are kind of these plastic dividers which uh, I might find another use for but I thought that was packaged really nice I've actually been impressed with the packaging overall even the game when it came in the box that they used it was uh, the box itself was styrofoamed inside the shipping container so it was nice and snug very impressed with that uh, sure beats you know people putting popcorn or those little inflatable bags that I hate all right, so who do we have here? Here we've got Asim. So this is the first of the adventurers that we're going to take a look at. And Asim here I won't cover everything. Well, because that would just take forever. But as you can see, they've got their different abilities as they level up. And as he goes from yellow to orange, then you know they're, they're, you pick one action from the color. So when he gets to orange, he'd either be a free melee or a free move and then red. Uh, be the same thing you get to pick one at least i think it's one it's not like pick two or three he gets a curved dagger this thought may hold a curved dagger instead nice so he can have like dual weapon that's one thing i liked about this kind of had the backpack feel you get to carry equipment equip them with like weapons and armor and stuff uh let's see baron here's another person kind of looks like a berserkish berserker guy oh uh, he gets a crossbow Oh, he gets a Dwarven Axe. That's like a Dwarven Berserker. He gets a crossbow. This is Johannes, Megan, Rolf. I think we had like a Barbarian in the last one. And her name is Selly. Selye, maybe. Selly, Selye. So there's your heroes that you get. So again, six. That's why I'm thinking, you know, this, this, you have enough that you could easily play a game like this is a separate game uh, and the artwork I always thought was really cool I, I had to admit though I'd have to take the nun from the other game that was my favorite the armored warrior nun now I'm also pretty sure that massive darkness will probably make the crossover cards at some point I don't think my game included crossover cards for these characters not sure don't don't quote me on that but I'm pretty sure I didn't have those and then here like I said just a huge stack this has a few items in it already. Uh, starting equipment. So that's one thing is everybody gets to choose from like their starting equipment. As far as I know, I didn't see, if I remember right, like I said, it's been a while since I've played. You, you're not restricted by what you can use. So, you know, there's some start, starting swords. Now, generally, the characters excel at certain things. So you try to match them up with what they're good with. Uh, like the guy who can hold a crossbow. I don't even think a crossbow is starting equipment. And, oh, teleconnect blasts for your magic user. 
So there's your equipment and trying to remember. The good thing they have icons to help me remember. So your sword, this is uh, what you need to roll if you're going to use like your sword to bash down something like a door and then it's uh, makes a noise token. This is a quiet weapon and noise is important because when you play the game the zombies are attracted to noise so as you do th actions that generate noise then the zombies gravitate towards the area with the heaviest noise. So just in general using this as a weapon doesn't generate noise. So it's a uh, zero range so it has to be in the same square. You roll one die, you hit on a four and it does one point of damage. So this is great just for killing down your basic creatures. And that's what a lot of the equipment is. Then there's a few items here that will appear to be a little bit stronger. So you do have a chance to upgrade a little bit. So there's some of the equipment. And the rest of this, well, it looks like, looks like that was all the equipment. All right. And then the rest of this are the encounter cards. Oh, nope, there's some more equipment here. There's a torch. That's not really fancy equipment but then here are your short swords all right so the other equipment here then these were probably like the magical weapons so you get your starting gear which isn't very impressive but then there's a few items in here that you can put in the vaults like the lava burst uh, the special steel bow war cleaver and and the nice thing is you could easily transport these over into black plague or bring stuff over from black plague so very simple system they have in that aspect Here's your trebuchet engine. Ah, orc walker. Orc ambush. Place one orc walker in a zone you just searched. Oh, that's always lovely. So, if I just searched and I drew that, because that's what you do when you search, you get to draw a card. Could be an axe. You might find some chain mail. You might find a curved dagger, which the one guy can hold curved daggers. Death gale. Dragon bow. Ooh. That's always a favorite. Throw it out, light it, and then it just destroys everything in a, in a square. And sometimes that's what you gotta do to win the game because they give you like some tough creatures. And then there's a fal falchion. I never knew quite how falchion. Falchion sounds nice. Ghost sight. Uh, so again, a nice big selection there of items. Norse sword, plate armor. That's why I kind of like the medieval version of, of Zombicide just because you get swords and armor. Plenty of bolts. A repeating crossbow. Lovely. And that's half the stack of item cards. And some more. This starts off with a short sword. Okay. Spiked bow. My goodness. So much. Torches. Water. Then, after you have gone through all the equipment, then we have the creature deck. Uh, so usually what happens as you, I think there's a, a turn in the game where you, you flip, so you, you do certain actions and then you flip to see what creatures you get. Generally, I, th I think this is just when you open a room. So you open up a room and you, when you like kick open a door, uh, the certain rooms might have like two or three rooms and you get to see what's in there. Uh, then on your threat level, you start blue, which is like the lowest, and as you get people who level up. This is why I was saying the game gets more dangerous as you level up, because they start to throw more dangerous creatures at you. So, for example, here, if I had the game overall difficulty set at the orange fire, and I have to draw this card to see what's in a room, then I would be getting five orc walkers. Whereas at the game start, you don't get any creatures. So it's like a blessing because, you know... Normally you get experience by killing stuff, but this game you'll get experience, I think, uh, by finding some objectives. So you, there's a chance you could level up before you really start getting creatures. Nothing in sight. So blue is pretty safe. Now your game, though, you might say, but Eddie, if I always draw these cards and it always says nothing, how will I ever level up? Well, because the game does start with some creatures on the board, so you get, you get to kill off a few things. But anyway, there's a whole bunch of, of cards here with all types of encounters. Oh, and the Necromancer. Alright. So, lots of cards. And of course, if I'm explaining the rules wrong to you, that's fine, because like I said, I haven't played in a while, so going off my memory is never a good thing. Okay, so, let's take a look at some cardboard. I'll have to lift the camera here. There's actually quite a few uh, cardboard pieces. 
So here you've got just some basic game information one. Uh, mark where the exits are, here's your noise tokens, and then the entry points for the zombies and doors. Alright, I guess nothing too exciting on that. Here comes some more. Same thing, more doors, entry points for zombies, probably objective markers of some sort, noise. And usually they're double sided a lot of times. Yeah, so here, just so you can kind of see what the back looks like. The door after you kicked it open. The colored doors, because some scenarios, uh, the blue door might be special, green door might be special. So, just a reminder. What do we got here? Okay, now let me just count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I'm counting nine double sided game tiles. That's great. Their game tiles are awesome, and I keep telling myself I should use these in my role-playing games because the artwork is fantastic. So there's like on the outside in the village somewhere. Here, let's just take all three of these out. If I keep stacking these up under the camera, pretty soon they won't fit. So there's some tiles. Here's another one. Again, the artwork is just fantastic on the ooh little satanic pentagram. Those orcs are up to no good. Another outside village scene. And I'll try not to knock the camera over here. Again, some room. So again, you know, if, if uh, the mission said there was a door here and you kick open the door, you would have to see what creatures were in there. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think I flipped that one over. Here's some like running around in the streets outside. And here's nice, more garden-y type of scenes. So yeah, that's like 18 possible combinations because there's nine, they're double-sided. Um, but it doesn't look like, yeah, well, some of this starts to transition to city stone and then you still got some outside. So I'm sure you can mix and match these pretty well. I keep looking for the torches. Last thing I played was Massive Darkness, so I keep looking for the torch to see where the darkness is. <laughs> That's not this game. Uh, I apologize if it looks like I'm going through these rather quickly, but um, you can pause. It's just, I, I've always thought the artwork they've done is really good. And the cardboards are pretty, pretty, sturdy tile. Somebody had mentioned once that their tiles started to warp and kind of curl. And I've actually heard someone somewhere, I think I read it on a forum, they said a lot of times that happens as your game starts to pick up moisture. Like when it's factory sealed in the box, it's possible that if it was humid in the shop that packaged it and sealed it, that humidity is kind of trapped in the box. And so that might cause your, your tiles to warp. And what you can do to help them unwarp is get like some of those food desiccant, desic, desiccant, decadent, decadent, well, any of those, those packets that suck moisture out of your food. If you stick that in your game box and then all the weight of the, you know, game itself sitting on these, one, those packets, if they do actually absorb and suck out moisture, then that's drawing the moisture out of your tiles. And then the weight of the game then hopefully flattens the tiles back out. Okay, so we've got that right there. And let's grab one more tile for us to look at. All right, so again, these tiles are just really good. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I don't know if that's true about the whole moisture sucking thing. I'm sure someone might say, well, just dip them in rice. I don't know. Rice is for cell phones. Decadent, decadent, dec moisture packets are for game boards. All right, those are the game boards. We'll take a moment, reset, and come back and look at some miniatures. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier inside the uh, pizza box. The instructions on how to use the box, not necessarily refolded or anything, but it just says uh, there's two layers of plastic. So the first layer of plastic should have all of these miniatures, 
and that's how they would be arranged according to the the plastic but that sticker we got says that that's changed since then so i would just put the sticker over this side i just wanted to show you that real quick that that's the sticker and that was the part i meant about how your instructions on how to store stuff is here inside the box all right let's look at miniatures already all right so the game itself comes with a lot of miniatures i'm going to try not to show you duplicates of everything i'm going to try and just you know show unique so here's your trebuchet. I have not read the rules, so I'm not quite sure how this works. I'm not even sure this is a hero weapon. It almost looked like it's something you could draw. I don't know if that means it's an item that you can draw or it's an encounter and you have to fight the trebuchet, but it's actually a pretty hefty chunk of plastic there. And it's actually detailed really good. I like that. I, uh, I'm gonna have to learn how to paint because I think that would look pretty cool painted. And if you don't, it still looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that there for a moment because we're going to take a figure and put it next to it. Here's a hero figure. Here's the one guy with the crossbow. Alright, so this guy looks really good. And I just want to lay him here next to the trebuchet. So the trebuchet's kind of big. He's kind of big. You know, that's not really showing you a good size. Let's get a better camera angle. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna try this way. So we're like right on the figures. I'm gonna lay them down So as you can see the trebuchet itself is pretty hefty, but there's the hero with the crossbow. He's looking pretty good and Let's move him off to the side. So that's hero number one. There's the front side There's the back and the detail on these is just amazing All right, so we'll grab the next person which I think I might even zoom in a little bit more Okay, I've zoomed in pretty good. I think that's pretty good there, but you can really see them now. Yeah, the detail on these is just always phenomenal. Okay, so that's one hero. I'll put him back in his spot. This, I think, oh, this is the, I guess that's a sorcerer, sorceress lady. Let's just stick her down there. Again, that looks pretty nice. She's got her fancy wizardry weapon. She's got her sword. I gotta be careful not to bump this tripod because now the camera is front heavy. And here comes the dwarf. So I, I don't know if he's a berserker or what, but he kind of looked berserk to me. But there's his axe, there's his hammer, there's the front. Oh, I didn't show you the back of the sorceress lady. But here's what he looks like. Mostly just all fur from his big old furry bear cloak, I guess that is. From the top there. So I like him. That's a pretty good figure. That's the dwarf. Then we have... What was his name? Salim? Uh, I forgot. Asim, something like that. But there's his curved dagger. And I guess that's the falchion. And he's got another dagger on his front. Yeah, I, I think he's really good looking too. These are really nice. I'm not sure if the camera is really catching the detail on these guys, but uh, they look pretty amazing. Painting them will be fun. I actually got some smaller scale samurai the other day. I'm starting to learn. I think board game figures probably are sitting in that uh, scale of 32 millimeter. And then some of the war game stuff I do is probably closer to 28 millimeter. And even that much of a difference painting details is a little tough but for some reason these always felt like you could paint details pretty well and I think that's because they are just a slightly bigger scale like board game miniatures are a little bit bigger than war game miniatures which is fine because that makes them easier to paint so he looks good he's got a lot of detail on his muscles that's one more hero last hero of the group this is that Sully Selly uh, it's pretty darn skinny. I was like, is she missing parts? Nope, she just happens to have them all there. They're just arm behind her back. So another another really good looking model here. Though my wife probably won't like that one. She's not wearing much. And then we're going to take a look. This is, I think this is probably the Orc Necromancer. I'm not sure how many Orc Necromancers you get, but... There's at least one. 
Now, yes, they are single color molded plastic. So if you want to paint these things, uh, lots of people do, and some folks do some really amazing paint jobs. Just search the internet. You probably won't be seeing that out of me. All right. Uh, but again, he's got a lot of good sculpt to him. You can really see the musculature. Here he's got his fancy furry cloak holding his weapons. So that's the Orc Necromancer. Now I believe this next one is going to be an abomination. An Orc Abomination. That kind of looks like an abomination to me. Uh, this is really good. I could definitely use this in some D&D or something like that or whatever we play. But uh, yeah, he's pretty truly terrifying that is a nice nice sculpt there that messed up hand okay abomination wish I had a little nice little rotating camera set up instead you just get me plopping them down so here's a big this is probably a fatty because he's a little bit bigger than your average orc and there's the back I have not looked let's see yeah so just like the other game, you're going to get a couple fatties, but there's usually like two... Oh no, it's the same. I was thinking he's a different... No, he's a different sculpt. Slightly different sculpt. Uh, so that's nice. There's at least two sculpts for your fatties, and then several sculpts for the different types of orcs. And I think they got runner orcs too, just like the other game. And then some regular orcs, and then some tougher looking orcs. Here's one that looks tougher. He's got robes. He might be like a priest orc. Yeah. Again, amazing job. Great sculpt work, like with all the muscles and everything they got. Nice detail in the face. And let's grab you here. I haven't looked to see if like which ones are considered the orc walkers versus orc runners. But they do look vicious. And I'm trying to think. Looks like he's got bones sticking out of his arm. Let's get him a little closer. That guy looks like he's been hurt. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a bone sticking out of his arm or what. But yeah, that guy. He does not look happy. I don't think these are all undead orcs. I think uh, I think some of them might be. I mean, just because zombicide zombies, right? But that might be a a zombie runner because he's really small. I just love they they're so different than you know from each other. He just reminds me of something that should be like in Blood Bowl. You could make like a team of undead orcs and play Blood Bowl. That's a different game by a different company, but that just kind of looked like his big old shoulder pad. He should be playing football. Here's some more orcs. Again, I just, I think they've sculpted these really, really good. That's something I've always enjoyed about Cool Mini or not, is I think they just do a really good job with the miniatures. I'm trying not to yell into the camera, but look at that guy. And the rest are just kind of repeats of that. Uh, this guy looks different. Again, like I said, looks like they did include a few different sculpts of guys. But I think they'll start to repeat when I get to the other box. So this will just, just give you a chance then to see what we have. So, yep. Yeah. What we got here. They all look angry for some reason. Maybe because they're dead. I don't know. He's got his clothes all tore. Oh, you know, I just thought this makes perfect sense. You know, you, you play all these fantasy games, role-playing games. What happens to all those creatures you kill? Well, that now it makes sense. In all those games where you slay hundreds and hundreds of orcs, now you know what happens. They come back as undead orcs. Look at that. Yeah, this would be fun playing with these. Like I said, even if I don't play this, I don't always have a chance to play my board game, but um, when I do, this will be a fun new one to try out. But if not, I can always take the miniatures elsewhere. I know I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> Sorry, cool mini or not, but your stuff is good. I'm going to use it in other games. This is what your player track looks like. So you get six of them. So you're going to put 
equipment card here, so like your left hand, right hand, up here you get to put something special because their character says you can put like armor. Well instead of armor, some of them say you could put like your curved dagger here. Here's a backpack so you can carry a few items with you. And I think in the regular Zombicide game, and I've never played it, but I think when I was learning about the two games, one reason I wanted to do like Black Plague is I don't think you had left and right hand. I think you had like one active equipment and your backpack was smaller, or even if you had a backpack. I just remember looking at this and going, okay, this kind of has a role-playing game kind of feel to it. So there's your life tracker, your level up tracker for what skills you purchase. Down here is a slider, so as you kill things and get experience, you move this along, and then that tells you. Uh, now, it only has to be one character, so even if you're playing with all six people, as soon as one person's experience bumps up into one of these colored areas, then the whole party is affected. So a lot of times, the strategic planning part is deciding who levels up when. You know, because you don't want one person to go all the way to red, and everybody else still be deep down inside orange, because then the game will just be really, really hard. But anyway, there's, there's how you track that. So that's just a little look at the character tray. All right, then it came with the character bases. I mean, that's just important because your life tokens, trackers, different things like that. You just put the color base on the bottom of your figure and you know you do everything related to orange or purple. And here's here are those little pegs. So this is what you would put on your character tracker so you would know where your life points are and whatnot. And again, just all corresponding, each person gets a color. I guess it really wouldn't matter, but they have it set up that way. Color coordinate your team, and then you get some dice. And uh, I think the six is probably pretty good. I just keep thinking back to no game company in particular, <coughs> Fantasy Flight. You don't always get all the dice you need, but I think with Cool Mini or not, this should be, this should be good. I think six is good. Uh, uh, uh. I mentioned that only because uh, the other other companies I won't mention, <laughs> Fantasy Flight, you might be required to roll six dice, but they only ever give you like half of what you need. It's always annoying. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Let me lift this up real quick. So the rest of the miniatures then are just more of the same. Uh, so what you have here, this row then here this first row that basically just kind of tells you then the layout for all of these rows there's a lot so generally when I play with my friends we will pull the miniatures out of here first and that way when we put the game back you know you got this here as a guide now if that doesn't work because you pulled everything out I mean generally a lot of times you can easily tell just by the fit and the way it sits into that vacuum mold what goes where but then that's why on the inside of the box it has that instructions that say here's how things should be laid out so they make it they do make it fairly easy for you to put everything back but that's it that's the contents of the game so we've already looked at all the miniatures we've looked at your character plastic trackers we looked at the trebuchet which is a pretty good chunk and we'll put that back that goes in this way there it is and we looked at your board oh that was not nice of me to do sorry that was probably sound terrible but that that's it so you get quite a bit of content in your game box and it is its own complete game that way if you just want to get into this this would be a good starting point and like I said I have not sat down and read the rules but I would almost be guessing that uh, the rules are probably updated as well so if you can play this game this might have some actual maybe some clarified rules up to I don't know but I'm sure you could use the rules in the other game as well and the cards are compatible so yeah I think this is a good entry point for you if you've never tried it before um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.